Hi, Mr. Wright here, and welcome to this film in which I'll work my way through some IGCSE questions on proportion from some straightforward questions to begin with into more complex grade 7, 8, 9 sort of questions. You can click the link in the description to download the questions, then you can have a go at them before me, or you can simply work alongside me as you like. Please, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Please do like the film. Please do leave me any comment about how you're getting on or about anything else I can do to help you as you prepare for your LXL IGCSE paper twos. Right, let's get on with the maths. Question two. F is inversely proportional to the square of V. That will mean that F is inversely proportional to the square of V will mean that F is proportional to 1 over V squared. So that means that F equals K over V squared. Right, now I'm given some values here. I know that F is 6.5 when V is 4. So I know that 6.5 equals K over 16. So k must be 16 times 6.5. k must be 104. So now I can write down my formula for f in terms of v. f will be 104 over v squared. And that is question 2 complete. Question 3. p is inversely proportional to the square root of q. So p is proportional to 1 over root Q. So that will mean that P equals K over root Q. Now I'm given some values here. I know that P is 10 when K, sorry, when Q is 0 0.0064. So that means that 10 must equal K over the square root of 0 0.0064. So that tells me that k equals 10 times the square root of 0 0.0064. So on my calculator, square root of 0 0.0064 times by 10 gives me k is 0 0.8. So my formula for p in terms of q is going to be that p equals 0 0.8 over the square root of q. Find the value of q when p equals 20. Well, I know my formula is p equals 0 0.8 over the square root of q. And I'm told that p is 20. So 20 must equal 0 0.8 over the square root of q. In which case, if I multiply both sides by the square root of q, I'm going to get 20 root q equals 0.8 root q equals 0 0.8 over 20. Let's write that now. And that is 0 0.8 divided by 20. And so q is going to be 1 over 25 squared. Gives me an answer of 1 over 625. And that is my value of q when p is 20. And that is... Question three, complete. Question four. A is inversely proportional to C squared. So that means that A is proportional to one over C squared. So A equals K over C squared. Right, I'm given some information here. A is 40 when C is 1.5. So 40 must equal k over 1.5 squared, which tells me that k is 40 multiplied by 1.5 squared, which means that k is 90. So now I can write my formula for a. a is going to be 90 over c squared. Now let's have a look at the question. Calculate the value of c when a is 1,000. So I've got my formula here. 
which is a equals 90 over c squared, and I need to calculate the value of c when a is a thousand. So a thousand will equal 90 over c squared. Multiply top both sides by c squared. 1000 c squared equals 90. c squared equals 90 divided by a thousand. So c will be the square root of that. So 90 over a thousand. And I'm going to square root that. Gives me an answer for C of 0 0.3. That's question four done. Question five. A is inversely proportional to the square of R. So A will be proportional to 1 over R squared. Which means that A equals k over r squared. Now I'm given some information. a is 5 when r is 0 0.3. So 5 is equal to 0 0.3 squared, which will mean that k is equal to 5 multiplied by 0 0.3 squared. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.3 times 5 gives me k is equal to 0 0.3. Four, five. So my formula then is going to be a equals 0 0.45 over r squared. Find the value of a when r is 7.5 times a. Let's have a look. Well, here's my formula for a. a equals 0 0.45 over r squared. So a will be in this case 0 0.45 over 7.5a squared, make sure you square it all. So in that case, a will be 0.45 over 56.25 a squared. So multiply both sides by 56.25 a squared and you'll have 56.25 a cubed on the right on the left. 0.45 on the right. Divide both sides by 56.25 and then cube root your answer. So I'm going to cube root 0 0.45 over 56.25. So cube root fraction function 0.45 over 56.25 equals gives me an answer for a of one fifth or 0 0.2 that is question five done question six y is inversely proportional to the square root of x so y will be proportional to one over the square root of x so in that case, y equals k over the square root of x. Now I'm given some information. y is c to the power of 4, when x is c squared. So let's substitute those in. So I've got c to the power of 4 equals k over the square root of c squared. Ah, well then c over 4 equals k over c so k equals c to the power of 5. So now I can write down my formula. I'm going to have y equals c to the power of 5 over the square root of x. Find a formula for y in terms of x and c. Give your answer in its simplest form. I've done that. And that's the end of question 6. Question 7. Right. Y is directly proportional to the cube of x. So y is proportional to x cubed. So that's going to mean that y is k times x cubed. Now let's use this information here. So y is equal to 20h when x is equal to h. So 20h will equal k times h cubed. Find a formula for y in terms, well, let's find k here in our normal fashion. So k will be 20h divided by h cubed. Divide top and bottom by h, so I'll have 20 
over h squared. So that was, that's what k is. So now I can put that value of k back into the formula. So y will be 20 over h squared times x cubed. Find a formula for y in terms of x and h. Done. Right, now I imagine we're going to need to use that formula. The formula is y equals 20 over h squared times x cubed. And I'm asked to find x in terms of h when y is 67.5h. So y is 67.5h, and that is going to equal 20 over h squared times x cubed. So I've got to rearrange this to make x the subject. So I'm going to multiply, top, multiply left and right by h squared. 67.5 h cubed equals 20 x cubed. Divide, top, divide left and right by 20. x cubed equals 67.5 h cubed over 20. Let's first work out what that coefficient is, 67.5 divided by 20, it's 27 over 8, so x cubed equals 27 over 8 times h cubed, so cube root that, cube root 27 over 8 is 3 over 2, and the cube root of h cubed is h, so x equals 3 over 2 h. And that is question 17 done. Sorry, question 7 done. Question 8. F is inversely proportional to the square of r. So f will be proportional to 1 over r squared. So that would mean that f equals k over r squared. Now let's use the information I've given. f is 36 when r is 4. So 36 will be k over 4 squared. So k will equal 36 times 16. 576. Right, so now I can write this formula. F will be k, which is 576 over r squared. Part B. Work out the value of f when r is 48. Well, Here's the formula for f. So when r is 48, f will be 576 divided by 48 squared. 576 over 48 squared gives me a value for f of 1 quarter. And that is question 8 done. Question 9. m varies directly as a cube of h. So m is proportional to h cubed. So that will mean that m equals k times h cubed. Now m is 4 when h is a half, so 4 will equal k times 1 half cubed. So k will be 4 times 8, 32. So now I can tell you that m is equal to 32 times by h cubed. Right, find the value of h when m is 500, okay. Well, m is 32 h cubed, so that means that when m is 500, 500 must be 32 h cubed. So h cubed must be 500 divided by 32 which is 1, 2, 5 over 8. And so h is the square root of that. Sorry, the cube root of that, which is 5 over 2. So h is 2.5 or 5 over 2, and that's question 9. Question 10. p is inversely proportional to y squared. So p will be proportional to 1 over y squared or p will equal k over y squared. Right, when y is 4, p equals a. So a is k over 4 squared is 16. 
Right, I can find k now. k is equal to 16a. So now I can write down my formula. p equals 16a, because that's k over y squared. Find a formula for p in terms of y and a. I have done that. p is 16a over y squared. Part b. Right, given also that y is directly proportional to root x, so y is k root x, and when x equals a and p equals 4a, find a formula for p in terms of x and a. Now my initial problem here is that I have this formula that gives me p in terms of y, and I have this blue formula that gives me y in terms of x. But here I'm given a relationship between x and p, and I don't currently have an equation which links p and x together. So I'm going to combine the yellow and the blue equations there. I'm going to take that value for y and substitute it into my yellow equation. So here's my equation from part a, and I'm now going to substitute in that y is k root x. So that's going to give me p equals 16a over k squared x, because that's the square of k root x. Now I'm going to use this information that's given to me here. I know that when x is a, p is 4a. So I know that p is 4a, and I know that equals 16a over k squared a. Now I'm going to find an expression for k now. I'm going to multiply both sides by k squared a, so I'm going to have 4 k squared a squared equals 16a. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 4a squared. Gives me an expression for k squared. Let's simplify the left-hand side there. k squared is going to be 4 over a. So that means that k is 2 over root a. And now I can put that straight back into my equation here. So p is going to be equal to 16a over k squared, which is 4 over a, times by x. So that gives me p equals 16a squared over 4x, which gives me p equals 4a squared over x. And there is my formula for p in terms of x and a. p equals 4a squared over x. And that is that question done. Quite a tricky question. It was a question 19 in a previous paper. Question. Well done. That is revision of proportion ticked off your list. And with any luck, given that this topic didn't come up in paper one, it will rear its head in your paper two. Please do hit like. Please do ask me any questions in the comments. And of course, I'll respond. Well done. See you in the next film.